Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, uh, chat? Hi, chat. Um, I don't know how many folks are actually uh, chatting down there. I know we got a few in the room, uh, so I know some people just listen, but uh, rolling solo today, rolling solo today. Uh, Kyle's doing business trip stuff, so just me this week. Um, and I'm just going to own this right up the top of the show. If you do not mind, <laughs> I'm not going to be talking about Michigan. I know. I know. Uh, it's 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 this is an Ohio State podcast and Michigan is. Um, I was about to say in the middle of their own tat gate, but man, that doesn't even. It's 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 going to go beyond. It's going to go beyond tat gate, I think. Um or maybe I just really, really wanted to. Maybe I'm maybe I'm just viewing things through an Ohio State lens, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. Uh, there's plenty of people talking about that. I'm going to stay on schedule. I'm going to stay on our normal routine. This is our Thursday episode. This is the episode in which we get to know our enemy, our enemy being the Wisconsin Badgers, the Wisconsin Badgers uh, roll into this game doing fine. Doing fine, I guess. Um, they're, you know, they got two losses on the year already. Uh, lost a six to fifteen snoozer against Iowa. They had the Washington State loss early in the year, which at the time we all thought was really bad. Um, then, then I think we figured out as the season went on that hey, yeah, Washington State's not a bad football team. So the Washington State uh, loss definitely looked worse in in the in the time frame of week two than it does in the time frame of week eight are we in now week nine week eight um but yeah wisconsin rolls into this game uh five and two uh we take a look at we took a, we take a look at wisconsin and they're not i'm just gonna say this they're exceedingly average uh they're they're in a slightly they're a slightly above average football team now I want to say this before before this gets away from me. Before this gets away from me, I, I'm going to say this: that Wisconsin is a very average football team, but there is certainly enough talent on this team to be dangerous. There is enough talent on this team that if Ohio State walks in completely flat-footed, completely hungover from the Penn State win. If they just sort of wake up, roll out of bed and try and play Wisconsin, they're going to get their face kicked in like straight up they're 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 going to get their face kicked in. Um, that being said, if Ohio State shows up and does what Ohio State is supposed to do, how good are their edge rushers? How good are their edge rushers? Um, they're they're not a bad team in the sack category, which I, I'm sure is at least partially the question you are asking. Um if we take a look at their passing statistics, um, they're 47th in the country in uh, sacks. And when I say they're 47th in the country in sacks, that's an advanced metric. Uh, that is sacks based off of uh, pass attempts by their opponent. So that's that's not just like total sacks. That's sacks adjusted per pass attempt. Sorry, I didn't see the sign to come in. Someone must have stolen it. Ha ha ha. Good guy. It's a funny guy. Um, so, I mean, they're an above average team as far as sacking goes. You know, they're, there's 130 teams in the country. They're number 47. And that's just that's going to be a theme as as we sort of roll through the. Is Jerry, uh, you uh, Austin, you still have me muted from. So he's not in here. Someone tell Austin he saws me muted from when he was guest starring. Tell him it's just him. Although I think I probably just realized I don't have my camera on. And, you know, we're, we're rolling solo. I don't have Kyle here to remind me to do my basic Kyle things uh, or my basic Sloopcast things that Kyle reminds me to do. Uh, hey, Austin, you probably have me muted. He still can't hear me. Um, so, yeah, the uh, again, we're looking at Wisconsin. Wisconsin is. Uh, 61st in the country, 61st in the country, uh, at points per game. 
Wisconsin is, you know, so 130 teams in college football. It's it's a slightly above average uh, yards per game. If we look at the yards per game, uh, they are 57th in the country. In- incredibly average points per play 74th slightly above uh, slightly below average yards per play 74th slightly below average offensively um a very average uh offense at least not sure can't do it live um might be the first show edit in a long time yeah that'll be a show edit that'll be a show edit for sure um yeah, but I, I got I got to keep moving because I don't want to I don't want to make more than one show edit, but that'll be a show edit. <laughs> uh, if we look over at the Wisconsin defense, then it uh, it looks a lot better. Opponents points per game. 17th. Um, opponents yards per game. 27th opponents uh, points per play. 18th. Yards per play, 22nd. Uh, They're a better football team defensively than they are a football team offensively. Uh, That's what we know so far about Wisconsin taking a look at the stats. Uh, The rushing statistics, you know, you almost expect Wisconsin to be a, uh, a powerhouse running team most years. And they're definitely better rushing than they are at at passing um rushing uh rushing yards per game 31st yards per rush at 28th uh their rushing defense on the other hand not, now we're fading back into like average territory they're they're an average rush defense um their pass you know, total opposite on the pass side they, they're a pretty bad passing team um yards per pass at 111th in the country um, which is, which is obviously not great. Um, but in the opponent's yards per pass, 10th in the country, good pass defense, bad pass offense, um, a slightly, uh, p- p- pretty a, a good, a good rush offense and, a above average rush defense is, is what we're looking at as far as, as Wisconsin is concerned. Um, Turnover statistics, they're below average. Uh, they're good at uh, they're they're good at um, not throwing interceptions, uh, but everything else is pretty much average. It's it's all very average. Um, I, I, I wish I could be taking some sort of super entertaining uh, hard line fire and brimstone stance about the Wisconsin team. Uh, but I, I, I just got, I got nothing to say other than maybe their rush offense and their pass defense, uh, that they're either average or slightly above average or slightly below average football team. That's what I've got. That's that, that's what I've got as far as it was, as Wisconsin goes. Um, I know it's not, it's not, it's not the, it's not the biggest, it's not the most exciting, but to be fair, um, neither is Wisconsin. So sometimes know your enemy is a reflection of the team that we're getting to know. Um, sometimes it's, it's, it's a reflection of the team that we're, we're, we're trying to get to know. And, uh, Wisconsin, they're, they're a boring football team. Um, we take a look at their schedule, um, Washington State, they they lost that game. They they had a not super convincing win against Buffalo. Uh, they had an okay win against Georgia Southern. Okay, considering it's Georgia Southern, then it started to look like they're putting things together a little bit more. Uh, decent win over Purdue, a decent win over Rutgers. Then they only score six points against Iowa. Uh, you know, and we can compare like what Ohio State did against what Ohio state did against Purdue and what, or excuse me, Penn state and what Penn state did against Iowa. And we can maybe try and draw, but that's, uh, I'm not going to do that. Point of the matter, however, uh, is just that, uh, and by the way, then they barely beat Illinois at Illinois last week. 
guys, it's, 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 it's Wisconsin. I mean, and, and, you know, at this point, just congratulate me for making it into this podcast. Uh, so needless to say, Dave will have a conservative game plan again. Um, I hope not. Um, and I say, I hope not because it, and I don't know, it's, it's maybe hard to say considering the teams that Wisconsin has played, but they do have at least statistically, again, the best teams they've played are Washington state and Iowa. So take this as the statistics as they are. But if you look at the statistics, this is a pretty good pass defense team. So if this is going to be another instance in which Ryan Day is going to be like, I'm going to try and establish the run game really, really hard. And like Ohio State has had bad rushing performances against average rush defenses in the past. So Wisconsin being a average rush defense um, isn't something that I'm going to be like, oh, so Ohio State should be able to run on them because I, I don't. I, I don't think that's the case. But what, what I'm afraid could happen is that Ryan Day is going to turn this into one of his, I'm going to, I'm going to try and prove that we're a rough and tough running team games. And then if that doesn't work, which I don't expect it to, if that doesn't work, he might then turn around and start trying to pass the ball. And again, if the statistics are legitimate, and I'm not saying they are, but if the Wisconsin statistics are legitimate as far as their passing defense, that might prove to be difficult. Again, opponents yards per pass at only 10 yards, or excuse me, at uh, 5.8 yards, which is 10th in the country. It's an exceptionally good pass defense. They get sacks more often than most teams, although it's not devastating. Um, they don't force or they do force a decent number of interceptions. Um, completion percentage, they hold the opponent completion percentage to 58.23, which is 36th in the country, which is, you know, in the top third or the yeah, the top third, almost the top fourth um, in the country. I just I, I don't want them to like I don't want Ohio State to, again, try and prove themselves as as Ryan Day has done against lesser opponents this year. We're a big, strong, mean rushing team, and we're going to run the ball a million times to prove it to everyone, including ourselves. Because I, I don't think that the passing game is just going to be there when they're ready to settle for it, which is how I would describe how Ohio State played against like Youngstown State. And like I said, some of the other lesser opponents. But hey, Kyle. But, but I don't think they're going to take... I don't think they're going to take Wisconsin quite that lightly. I think they're going to treat Wisconsin as who I think they are, which is the third toughest team they've played this year. I think that's who Wisconsin is. It is the third toughest game on their schedule to this point. That That is... Hey, Kyle, can you... Ah, never mind, don't worry about it. Uh, Kyle's apparently in the chat, even though he couldn't join me. Uh in, in the studio today. So, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, when it comes down to it, nope, hotel Wi-Fi sucks. No, I wasn't going to ask you to jump on the call. I, 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 you, you already told me about the hotel Wi-Fi. We had that discussion last night. Congratulate me for being maybe the only Ohio State podcast doing a preview of this game, exclusively a preview of this game, making it 15 minutes into this podcast without bringing up Luke Fickle. Yes. Have you heard Luke Fickle's the new head coach at Wisconsin? Um, I, I don't know what to make of that other than to say that he knows Ohio State. Although <laughs> Kyle uh, doing Pikachu surprise face down in the chat. Um, inside slash mid zone Mayan was cooking Penn State early he was cooking Penn state early because Ohio state was throwing the ball first loosened up Penn state a bit. And then they started running Ohio state can run the ball. As long as teams aren't prepared for Ohio state to run the ball. That's the, that's the magic key. 
And I know that's not what a tough, rough tumble team does. That's not what a physical team does. But, well, we don't have those offensive linemen. Not this year. Um, point, point is, is that uh, Luke Fickle is now the head coach at Wisconsin. And we could talk about familiarity. But that familiarity goes both ways. Oh, he knows us and yada, yada, yada. We know him too. And last time he came into the shoe, he got cooked. And I know a lot of people will say, but Cincinnati, but Cincinnati, but Cincinnati. Fickle's last two teams at Cincinnati were had more talent than this current uh, Wisconsin roster does. Do I need to say that again? I'll say it again. Yeah, I'll say it for, again for those in the back. And I also want to say it again because it's not true. Not 2002, uh, but the 2001 team uh, specifically. Uh, and the, uh, was it also the uh, 20? Yeah, 22 and the 20. No, I'm I'm lost. Anyway, uh, um, yeah, it would be in the 21 team and the, is it the 2020 team or the 2019 team? I forget exactly. Yeah, don't do math. Thank you, Specs, for that reminder. Don't do math live on the podcast. Had more talent than this current Wisconsin roster does. Let's take a look at the Wisconsin roster. Uh, being led by quarterback Mordecai, um, he is, and, and stop me if you've heard this one before, um, average, especially solo. Yeah. He is an, he's an average quarterback. Uh, one could argue below average. Uh, he's thrown the ball for 60, almost, let's just round it up and say 64% completion percentage. Um, a long of only 45, uh, and maybe most unfortunately, um, is Mordecai hurt? Is Lockie the quarterback? Well, that's, that's good news for Ohio state. Do we know that Mordecai's out or is that assumed? I'm asking the chat. Let's see what the chat has to say. I, I thought that was up in the air. Like 85% sure. Okay. Same. Okay. I didn't know it was anywhere close to that certain. Now I'm second guessing though. See, you have me second guessing too. That's 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 the game we're playing right now. Uh, uh, if, if he's out, that's good news for Ohio State. Um it's it's a his hand is actually broken. Look it up, Jared. Look it up. No, I won't be looking it up on the podcast. Per CBS, took me a second to realize you didn't mean cornerbacks. You don't have to edit it now, though. I now understand exactly what you mean, but it took me a second. Okay, I didn't realize his hand was actually okay. Um, well, that's good news for Ohio State because while Mordecai um was average, if not slightly below average. Um, just checked. He's out. Thank you. Uh, Locke is not, uh, slightly below average. Wisconsin quarterback Tanner Mordecai broke a bone in his throwing hand. I did not know it was actually broken. I thought, I thought it was like a strain or a sprain. See you, Kyle. Uh, Pin in his surgical hand. Oh, he's he's, got, he's broken. He's got surgery. Return. No, he, he has no timetable for return. He's out for the year. They're, they're, if you they actually cut him open and put a pin in his hand, that's that's got to be game over for the season, right? Well, this game just got a lot easier, guys. <laughs> um. Yeah. Locke is not a good quarterback. Uh, he's currently uh, slightly above 50% completion percentage on the year. Uh, that's uh, 37 completions on 72 attempts. 
I, I will say this. Uh, he has this over Mordecai. Uh, Mordecai was three and three touchdowns, the interceptions and, and locks two to one. So he's got that going for him. He's got that going for him. Rushing game. On the rushing side, Braylon Allen is a pretty good running back. He's a very good running back. Um, ironically, the exceedingly average portion of, of this uh, Wisconsin running game, I think, is mostly the fault of a offensive line that's not great, which is a weird thing to say about Wisconsin. But it's a exceedingly average offensive line. Big Cody Simon game. Uh, yeah, I'd say so. I would say so, yes. Wide receiver wise, I don't know. I just want I just want to say this again. I really like Braylon Allen as a running back. I really do. Um statistically. Um statistically, even if you look at uh, his rushing, he's 5.9 average. He's got a great average. Um, he's, I don't know. I just, I don't know if they're just not giving him the ball enough. I think maybe they're not giving him the ball enough. I fixed it. Boys, I'm a genius. There you go, Austin. Didn't even need me to help. But what, what, what's, what's that for? I was trying to help you. I have to edit a I have to edit a portion out of the podcast earlier in the show. You know, I have to do a same day edit. I have to edit the podcast on the same night I'm releasing it. And I did that for you. Son of a bitch. <laughs> wide receivers. Uh, Will Pauling is their best wide receiver uh, with Mordecai out. I don't know. You don't have to up your Patreon. Patreon.thesleepcast.com. Always be plugging. Um, with Mordecai out, I don't know how much of a factor any of the wide receivers are going to be. Um, that's that's just me being real with you. Uh, Pauling uh, has, at least through the course of the season, received uh, the higher volume of receptions. Uh, tending to be uh, the more the volume guy, whereas Dyke uh, tends to get a lot of the longer, you know, not, not nearly as many receptions, but a lot closer in yards than you would expect a much higher average. Um, defensively, uh, one of the guys you really need to keep an eye on is Daryl Patterson, their linebacker. Um, you know, I keep talking this Wisconsin team's very average. They're very average. It's a very average Wisconsin team. And I'm I'm gonna stand by that. Um, but I think they have a great trio at running, uh, or excuse me, at linebacker. Um, Cheney, Patterson, and uh Gutierrez. I, I I really like um They're a great trio at linebacker. I, I I don't have a whole lot else to say about that. Um, James Thompson Jr. Uh, is a very good defensive end. He has three sacks on the year. Um, one of the things, and we talked about this um, not not last week, but week before last. Uh, they're the the top solo tackler on the team right now is their safety, and that's typically a bad sign. Um. Yeah, it's not great. Uh, he's not just their top solo tackler. He's also far and away their top tackler. Uh, 45 solo tackles on the year. Uh, next behind him is 28. Uh, top total tackler on the team, totaling 70. Next behind him, 44. They're 19 for 19 on PATs, so they're actually above average at something. Uh, I actually, if I go back to my stat sheet, 
I think kicking field goal conversion percentage 91.67 on the year, which ranks them 15th. No, no college kickers in Wisconsin this year, y'all. No hashtag college kickers in Wisconsin this year. That's good, but being uh, so many decimals, that means there's definitely uh, kicking way too much. And not really. It's a it's a 6.7, which is just like probably a 666 repeating, right? It's not it's not that many. How many attempts, Jared? I don't have I don't have that in front of me and I'm not going to look it up. I don't have it in front of me and I'm not going to look it up. Um. You have it. Okay. How many attempts? 12 says spikes. 12. 11 makes. See, he's only missed one field goal in the year. That's pretty good. No issue is nine for 10. See, practically the same, but better. Wisconsin, slightly better. Listen, Austin, we were just looking for an instance in which Wisconsin was above average at something other than defending the pass, which, considering the best team they've played this year is Iowa, might be a statistical anomaly. We're not sure yet. All right. Uh, let's get into our predictions. Let's get into our predictions. Ohio State player to watch. Ohio State player to watch. Um, one of the things I'm looking for in this game is Kyle McCord. Uh, I, I went again. We I've already talked about this. Yeah, but now you're just talking about extra points. I, I don't care about extra points. That has nothing to do with the kicker. Um, we're talking about the kicking game. We, we've already established that they're not a good offensive team or excuse me, that they're a slightly above average offensive team. Um, oh, I say player to watch is Connor Stallions, and that's obvious. Um, that would be enemy player to watch. Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. But maybe, um, I'm sure he still has tickets. He probably has tickets, whether or not he'll use them is another question. Can they flag those in the Ohio state Ticketmaster system and deny entrance? Is that a thing that can happen? I hope so. Says Odin. Imagine the hilarity that's going to ensue when he shows up at the game. He, he He's not showing up to any more official uh, Big Ten events ever. I'm going to go ahead and say that with all of my chest. Oh, I say play to watch. Going Kyle McCord here. I'm going to go Kyle McCord. Um, I'm going to go Kyle McCord because, as I stated, one of the uh, glaring statistical advantages that Wisconsin does have in this matchup is a really good pass defense. They're good at keeping um, the opponent's yards per pass attempt low. They're good at keeping the opponent yards per game low. Um, it, it's one of the glaring or maybe shining is shining the better term to use when it's a positive one of the shining um, outliers in their statistical performance uh, I think this is a good game for Kyle McCord to go out, have a really good game. Allegedly, Emeka is supposed to be back, I guess. Um, we'll see if it actually happens. But, you know, if, if this is a game where he goes out he, and he dominates against Wisconsin, you can't just discount it. You can't just say, ah, well, Wisconsin. No, it'll be a great game. So I think it's a game in which he can go out there and absolutely rip things apart. Um, and you know, like I said, it would be a great feather in his cap if he does. Kyle is picking Cade Stover as his Ohio state player to watch. Um, I'm going to re I'm not sure if Esquire, who is our guest picker this week. Um, I'm not sure if Esquire get, did individual picks. I know he has a long paragraph. I will read that. I'll save that for the end though. But our guest picker this week is Buckeye Esquire. Um, 
enemy player to watch. Uh, Kyle is going to go um, with he's going to he's going to I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it. Kyle took the easy way out. Uh, he, he took Braylon Allen. Of course, he took Braylon Allen. Uh, I, I think that's a real cowardly move on Kyle's part to to take uh, clearly the best offensive player on the team. Um, I think it's a selfish move on Kyle's part. I denounce Kyle and all of that. I, on the other hand, will be going with Daryl Peterson, um, one of the key linebackers for the uh, Wisconsin Badgers. Key matchup. Um, I'm going to go with the Ohio State wide receivers versus the Wisconsin secondary. Again, one of the key statistical shining outliers for Wisconsin is their pass defense. I want to see how Ohio State uh, stacks up against that. You know, we we get to once again test the Ohio State passing game while simultaneously seeing if Wisconsin's stats are real or or not. And I think that's always a uh, just someone like me who likes statistics. That's always fun. Um, Kyle did. Um, I don't think Kyle did a key matchup that or I copied and pasted poorly. One of the two. Let me check something. Um, he wrote SP. I don't know what SP means. <laughs> key matchup um I, well i gave you my key matchup uh spread pick oh sp meant spread pick uh kyle is going ohio state i'm just going to go ahead and say uh it's, it's an ohio state event across the board for kyle um ohio state to win and cover per kyle I, on the other hand, uh, I said I, on the other hand, for some reason, um, I, it's not on the other hand. I'm, I'm picking Ohio State to win and cover. Um, this this really could be a sleepwalky game. This really could be a game. Oh, here we go. I don't know. Uh, I don't know uh, anyone on Whiskey's roster other than Braylon Allen. I'm going to I'm going with Whiskey's best. See, another cowardly move. All signs are pointing towards Ohio State winning. I have no issue saying Ohio State's going to win this game. None. Um, again, Wisconsin is talented enough, especially on the defense, that if Ohio State sleepwalks into this, all signs. Yeah, I, I, I got you. I'm going into this just going that Ohio State is going to win this game unless they totally just sink themselves. There, there'd be no excuse for losing this game, but Wisconsin is good enough that they can punish you if you sleepwalk into it. Now, Mordecai not playing um, obviously pushes that pretty heavily towards Ohio State's favor, even more so than it already was. So... With Mordecai out, I feel very comfortable saying Ohio State both wins and covers. Um, with Mordecai out, there's a decent chance Ohio. This might be the first Ohio State shutout in a minute. Jer Stop lying, Jared. Wisconsin sucks. The entire theme of this show, this ep entire episode has been that Wisconsin is exceedingly average. Of course, all of those statistics were based on Mordecai playing. No Mordecai. Um, it, it, it takes things down a notch for them, if we're being honest. Uh, a pretty a pretty heavy notch down for them, if we're being honest. I'm going to go ahead and uh, stick to the bit on the... Um, I'm going to stick to the bit on the score prediction. I don't actually think Ohio State will end up scoring this many points, but screw it. We're going to have some fun today. We're going to go with... Ohio State 62, Wisconsin 7.
And that seven will be scored um, in the fourth quarter against Ohio State's backups. How about that? I don't actually, I'm sticking to the bit. Can I get some nices in chat, please? Can I get some nices in chat, please? (laughs) Ohio State 65, Wisconsin 4. No, Spikes, we didn't. You did. Just you did. (laughs) All right. This is the uh, final prediction for Buckeye Esquire. There's a time when a Halloween adjacent night game in Camp Randall would have given me heart palpitations all week leading into the game. Buckeye Esquire, true. But this year we got the world's greatest sports scandal in the lead up. And frankly, I haven't thought twice or uh, once about the Badgers this week. Honestly, if I weren't preparing for this podcast, and you could all you could already tell I was a bit distracted by the fact that I thought that Mordecai's hand was simply sprained. I may have also been slightly distracted by the uh, by the other Big Ten news of the week. Braylon Allen is good. Luke Fickle is a good coach. I assume they will continue to have massive uh, Midwestern sourced offensive line. Not true. I mean, it's massive, but it's just, it's not it's not a Wisconsin offensive line. Uh, but we haven't lost to Wisconsin since we started deploying quarterbacks that can actually throw the ball. I have to say I'm a fan of that changeup, and we're definitely not starting now. Our defense will hold them down and smother them, and the offense will have enough good drives to cover the spread. And because it is canon that all scores must be nice. I like it when the guest picker sticks to the bit. It predicts this is the week that Kyle gets his accuracy dialed in a little bit more and the offense really pops and this thing turns into a romp. Real gambling analysis, two touchdowns plus the hook does make me feel a little dicey, especially if there's any semblance of a Penn State hangover. But damn, damned if I'll spread my sloop, I'll spend. Spend my sloop pick this week, taking the opponent to cover. I I feel you, Esquire. Uh, don't don't let things like logic get in the way of a final score prediction. Pick Ohio State final score fifty two to seventeen. Can we get a oh punt return touchdown? Took me a second. A PRTD this week. Yes. Yes, let's do that. All right, I need to go. Uh, let's see. Austin, I know Austin sent his over unders. Let me copy and paste them into here real quick so we don't lose chat. McCord completion percentage: sixty-five point six nine percent. That's a It's a very nice prediction. I'm going to go, I'm going to go over, um, as stated, the uh, Wisconsin Badgers are currently only allowing a 58.23 completion percentage. But as I stated before, um, when the best team you've played this year is Iowa, maybe those passing the defensive statistics aren't aren't the best lock passing yards, 176.5. Um, even with Mordecai, uh, who is a better quarterback, Wisconsin was only throwing, uh, 216.7 a game. Um, and Mordecai's better much better. So I'm going to go under on that as well. Wisconsin will have to throw it more this game though. Potentially. I'm sticking with my, I'm sticking with my number though. Um, I tell you, if they try to throw it more with Locke, 
if that's the, if that's the game plan, hey, we're gonna have to air things out with Locke, then they're just gonna have a bunch of three and outs and not end up throwing the ball all that often anyway, if we're being honest. Allen yards per carry over under 4.2069. It's a very specific, um, not very uh, kind of not very high, but very nice number. Um, I'm going to go over. I think he I think he gets close to five. I think he gets close to five. He's rushing five point nine on the year. Uh, Ohio State's run defense hasn't been. I don't, it honestly depends on how how if they really try and lean in on Allen because they don't have Mordecai and he ends up getting a ton of carries this game that could draw his average down a decent amount. It's a good number, but I'm still going to go over. Ohio State catches by players who aren't Marv Stover, Tate, or Abuka 5.5 under. Um, where where are they coming from? Fleming's good for one a game. Xavier's good for one a game. The collective running backs might be worth two a game. Scott doesn't average one per game. I, I like who who. Yeah, Innes is only caught uh, late. I think you meant Tate. He included Tate. I, if he if he had included Tate, I may have said over. Do you know what the average is? I do not. Oh, Innis late. Gotcha. 4.3 per game. Okay. Um, I, I'm sticking with under. Uh, Tyleek slash Hamilton slash Hall are three primary defensive tackles. Uh, total tackles at 8.5. In a rush-heavy game... In what could be a rush heavy game. I'm going to go over. It's, it's a high number. It feels like a high number anyway. But uh, I mean, honestly, not. That's what if they each get three. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go over. They average 7.5. Yeah. And like I said, I think this will be a run heavy game. Ty Hamilton played like a human boulder against Penn State. You really love to see it. You 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 do. You very much love to see it. Um, chip slash chop slash chisel. For those of you who don't know, chisel is we we needed a ch name for Trey, so uh, we eventually settled on chisel. Chip chop chisel carries twenty three point five. I hope it's under, but I feel like it's going to be over. Uh, that's, uh, I'm just gonna, I think I'm gonna leave it at that. I think I already expressed why I felt feel like that earlier in the show. Uh, Marv targets at 8.5. That has to be an over, right? I feel like he's good for six or seven catches a game. Plus if we're being honest, a drop a game. Um, and then, you know, one Kyle McCord miss a game and then the, you know, Miss to Marv, that is. Um, when you expect this game uh, to be a game to throw off the metrics? Um, you know, Ryan Day's whole thing about throwing off the metrics was in direct response to him feeling like his play calling was too predictable against Michigan. Um we might now know why he feel like his play calling was too predictable against Michigan. And it may not have been because of metrics. It may not have been because of tendencies. Um, but yeah, that, that that's where all of that talk about tendency breaking and all of that was coming from. So, yeah. All right. That, those are Austin's over-unders. Um, 
we'll see if we can't get because I know uh, I know Austin keeps track of these things. We'll see if we can't get predictions off air from Kyle for these. Uh, and he can get those to you, Austin. I mean, like bug the hell out of him until he does like. Just just poke him. All right, um, that's it. That's the end of the show. Um, I will be doing for those of you in the chat, I'll be doing sloop picks right after this. Um, tonight's ending music, uh, will be by a band called Courtney from work. I'm wearing the t-shirt. You're about to be listening to the music. If you're not about to listen to the music, cause you're watching this on YouTube, uh, there'll be a link in the show notes, which will take you to the song. Since my lawyer is here, allegedly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll always say allegedly. Um, Michigan are allegedly dirty cheaters. Um, so with all that being said, I'd like to, uh, no, it's still allegedly, it hasn't been like, well, we'll see. I'm not getting into it just because we're sure doesn't mean it's legally true. There's a difference. You, they'll show it. They'll show someone on the news in 4k punching someone in the face and they will still say, allegedly they, they do that for a reason. Anyway, tonight's ending music will be uh, by Courtney from work. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, sports local podcasters. Once again, this is Courtney from work. <laughs>